Hey guys, I am really excited to be filming this video today because we are going to be redesigning Goodreads. Now this whole idea came from a comment that I got on my channel, I wanna say like a year ago, and I just always had it in the back of my mind because I thought, this is such a great idea. Goodreads could totally use a redesign. And it really brought back a lot of memories for me. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you would know that I didn't really enjoy my computer science degree. And a lot of the days that I had classes, I would end up skipping them and just finding a quiet corner in the university somewhere so that I can just sit and read all day. And it was because of Goodreads that I found all these amazing books and got to enjoy different experiences that were so different from my reality as a university student um, doing a degree that I didn't really want to. So yeah, with all that being said, let's get started on our redesign. So the first step in creating this UI is to think about the concept and that required me to take a look at the Goodreads website. So if you haven't seen it before, I would say that the Goodreads website is like the UI form of ugly cute. It's oddly endearing and I kind of like it in in, its, in a way. I think it just does what it needs to do, but the styling is so public library that it really gets me thinking back to like when my parents would take my brother and I to the library and then we would get to check out books and like read them over the week or whatever. I was the kid that was obsessed with Egypt growing up for many reasons and I just remember checking out like every single book that they had. Anyways, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing, but I do want to capture that kind of spirit in the UI while also hopefully giving it more of a facelift and more of like a modern touch to it. All right, so we're actually going to start straight off into Figma today. From the little clips that I've shown you about what this UI is actually going to look like, it, how do I say this? It like actually looks like a real UI or a real web app, much more than I would say like my Street Fighter design or Fire Emblem or BTS one that I've done before on the channel. But because of this, like I didn't really feel like I need to sketch anything out and I just felt comfortable jumping straight into Figma. I think when you're doing a project for fun, there's no real need to follow a process if you feel like it's not going to benefit you. So that's why we're gonna start off in Figma today. And what I like to do when going into Figma is like just starting out, I like to darken up the background. I think that the default, like this hex code is just way too bright and I find it very straining on my eyes. So I'm actually just gonna darken it a little bit so we have more of that gray that Figma used to be before um, whatever update they did for this. And that just makes me feel more comfortable to work in. Next, I am also going to hit the F key and I'm gonna create a frame so that we can get started. And for me, my favorite is the MacBook Pro 14 inch frame because that's just honestly what I'm used to working in. And it's also the size of my MacBook. So I just feel more comfortable working in here. But of course you can choose whatever you want to. All right, and then the next thing I'm going to do is also round out the corners for my UI. Like I don't really need these straight corners and I'm eventually going to turn this into a dribble shot that I can post online. So I just wanna round out the corners and make it a bit more like fun and I guess like friendly. I'm gonna go with 16. And then for the actual background of the UI, I'm just gonna go into the fill and then I'm gonna hit the arrow key down once so that I get like the slightly off-white color. So to start off this design, I'm going to start with our left-hand sidebar and that's just exactly how I started when I was designing this thing first to begin with. But we are going to create that, that left-hand sidebar by hitting the R key on our keyboard and then we're gonna click and drag to create that giant rectangle. And for the fill layer of this rectangle, also make sure to select it first. For this fill layer, I am going to use this like off-white kind of brown color for the background. And then what I'm going to do is create a little side, like a little line on the side acting as a border. So one way you can do this is of course to just add a stroke onto the right hand side of your rectangle that you just created. But since I know I'm going to create this line like in other places in our app, I'm just going to use the line tool that Figma gives you. So you're gonna hit the L key and then you're gonna click and drag until you get a line that goes from the top to the very bottom of your design. Also hold down shift will make it a lot easier and just kind of like lock the line straight. But for the stroke layer, I'm using this little bit darker kind of brown 
There's a little bit of green in there I feel like too, but I'll leave the hex code on the screen and then I'm going to set the width to it to 0.5. So that would be my line. So my reasoning for doing this is pretty simple. When I was thinking about like books, uh, books are written on paper, paper has lines on it sometimes. That's kind of just why I wanted a lot more like strokes and borders across my application on the different components. Next, because we are using a lot of like browns and off-whites, I wanted to try and incorporate a little bit of color where I can. And that means I'm just going to try and add the little like Mac window options that you get at the very top left hand corner into my design as well. So in the very top left hand corner, I'm going to hit the O key, which will let you create a circle. And then you want to hold down shift so you can like get a perfect circle. And I'm going to create three of them, one in red, one in yellow, and then one in green. So when I'm doing this, I usually like to take the width of the thing I just created, like my circle in this example. And then I will take that width and then divide it by two. And that would be my spacing between each of them. And I just feel like it looks really nice. On the other side of the sidebar, I'm going to add in like a little navigation tool where the user can go back and forth with these two little arrows. So Figma lets us do that really easily by opening this little drop down up and then you can select polygon. So I don't want like equilateral triangles because I think it's just going to be a little bit too thick for this particular design. So I'm not going to hold down shift, but I'm just going to click and drag to get like two kind of narrow triangles. One is the back arrow and that one's going to be a darker brown because this is like there's an opportunity for us to go back to a previous page in this scenario that we're painting in this UI. And then the forward arrow is going to be an inactive grayed out kind of color because we'll say that this is the latest page that our user entered. Next up is adding the Goodreads logo and you can just find this on Google Images without the background. So you can just grab it as a PNG and copy and paste it into Figma. And then I'm also going to add like a little profile icon because I'm thinking that the left hand sidebar is just like the user's deck or the user sidebar panel. And for this example, I just chose like the picture that I used across all of my social media. So underneath that, we're going to add our big call to action. Like this is our big like button <laughs> for our user to do something with. And I'm thinking, you know, cause we are on Goodreads, the best thing we want our user to do and the most like frequent thing we want our user to do would be to add a new book into their, this like database would be kind of like the right word is what I'm thinking of. So using the R key again, we're going to create a rectangle and fill it in with this like our darkest brown color. Then I'm going to use the text and hit T. So hitting T will let you create text into Figma and then you can just start typing in what you want. And I'm going to add add a book. So for all of the fonts that I'm using in this design, I'm using a font called Lado and Lado should be pre-installed into your Figma. But if it's not, you can also go to Google fonts and you can download it for free. And whenever I do these design UI with me videos, I always try to give like use resources that are free. So you guys don't have to like pay more in order to practice more. Like I don't feel like that's necessary. You should be able to create really good designs with free resources that you find. So yeah, there's our big call to action button. Next, I have like four little links that would be relevant to a user. So using Lado again, and this is just regular Lado at a 15 size, I'm going to say notifications, inbox, profile, settings. And then I'm also going to choose a corresponding icon to each of these like different titles, different links. I think if I was to do this like as a professional project or something, I would definitely use icons that were from the same like icon family or icon group. I kind of just picked these out from like random ones that I found on Google images and stuff. And then I changed up the color, but yeah, you can kind of tell that they don't match up exactly because the lines, like the line thickness isn't the same for all of them. But for Dribbble, I, I really couldn't like, it's fine for me, <laughs> like I can live with it. And then next to notifications and inbox, I also wanted to do, add a little bit more color again by creating a square to actually show that the user has notifications and inbox. So I'm taking that same red color that we used for our, um, our little like close button at the very top. And then I'm using a square instead. So R key again, holding down shift will help you create a square. Then I'm just going to write in a little three and a little one to create my notifications and one message in my inbox. So underneath this is like basically all text because they're all links. I'm thinking that the user has a few favorite pages that they want to always have like bookmarked into their 
like sidebar panel for easy access and for the icons themselves i opened up the drop down again and i chose star but this time like i just drew a five pointed star and then i also rounded out the corners a little bit because i wanted them to be a bit rounder and then for all of my favorites um i'm saying like the books are currently reading reading challenge their tbr and favorites and their personal reviews so underneath favorites i pretty much just ended up duplicating it and then dragging it down to create this new section called shelves which are how i feel like the user would want to organize their books and for me it's by my favorite tropes i realized that as much as I read before, it's always like a romance genre, like that's the only thing that I really enjoy reading. Well, no, I, I mean, I'll read anything, but I prefer romance, so all of my like books are different types of romance, I guess, and I have my favorite tropes listed down here. I also ended up changing the icon from the star to a heart because that's really like what else can you choose at this point. So for the first one, I just say all books, like you can just see a shelf of all of your books, like your book shelf. <laughs> and then underneath are my favorite tropes. So slow burn, enemies to lovers, friends to lovers, oblivious to love, and work colleagues. A few of my favorites, definitely not all of them, but like I think most of the books that I read could be grouped up with at least one or two of these. And then underneath that, I also created another link for the user to add a shelf if they wanted to. So that's our sidebar. And I did feel like it was a little like boring and text heavy. And the only thing I really wanted to do was create a little rectangle. So it looks like one of these links is selected and I chose all books under my shelves. So I used the rectangle again by hitting R and then filled it in with like this very light brown color putting it behind the text, but above the sidebar. So it looks like we're selected and we're looking at the page, all books in, in our shelves. So that is the entire sidebar. So moving to the right, the next section of this design is like the main panel of the UI. And it wasn't like difficult to do. It's just that it's very like repetitive. So it took a lot of time to do so, but it's pretty easy. So at the very top, I pretty much just took Goodreads' main navigation and I just imported it into here and just copied all the text. So there's home, my books, which I use my same little brown rectangle that I just used for all books and then I just dragged it up here so that it looks like we're also selecting my books. At this point I'm not exactly sure what the navigation or what the yeah like what the tree looks like when it comes to this app's navigation but for Dribbble I don't really think it matters too much I just kind of like the way it looks. I also did browse and community and added these two little triangles pointing down next to them so like the user will know it expands into like a drop down menu and i also created a little search bar or like um, a search icon at the end so usually when it comes to creating the search icon i just do it by myself by hand because i feel like it's pretty fast all i did was hit the o key to create a circle created a circle and then close the little fill layer so it's not visible and then i added a stroke so that we get the little outer ring of the magnifying glass and i set the stroke to a width of two then i created a line using the same like l key and then i just created like a little diagonal line at the very bottom so that it connects and looks like a magnifying glass that's pretty much all i did in order to create the search underneath the main navigation i took that line that we just created for our sidebar and then i duplicated it with command or control D and then I just rotated it so that it was horizontal instead of vertical and placed it underneath just to like use that line again. Then comes the main like title which is like our biggest piece of text. This is Lado in 40 and it's also semi bold so this is all of the books and beside that I created a little total so that you have a count of how many books are in there and I chose 151 because that's how many original Pokemon there were. Then on the right hand side I decided to create a few different icons to show different ways you can organize this page layout. So for me like I think my preference is definitely to look at boards when I'm planning or when I like have a lot of content I want to organize. I feel like my brain just really enjoys looking at boards and it makes a lot of sense to me, but some people might not be like that. So there's also different options where the user can select looking at it as a table or they can look at it in a timeline view or even in a list view. So it all kind of just depends on what the user selects here. And when it came to these icons, I didn't find them online. I just kind of drew them out with rectangles and lines in Figma. So going back to under all books, I created a little fill filter button where I'm imagining a filter option would show up for our users if they were to click it. But this was another brown rectangle with the word filter inside and a little stroke 
again to kind of match up like all the little icons and stuff with the stroke in our design. So that's the filter. So since we are in a board view, I created four different boards for us to organize our books into. So for me, like this is how I would do it, but I usually like to organize it as in to be read. So all the books that you want to read that are kind of on your list and then the book in progress. I usually just read one book at once. Like I like to go into one world and just kind of focus on that book. I don't like to read multiple books at the same time, but I don't know, maybe some people like that. And then I have completed, which is like the biggest section for me. And I just have all the books that I've finished already. And then the last column that I have in this board is almost dropped, which for me, like I really hate not finishing a book even if I dislike it I will try to hate read it because I feel like if you don't finish a book then you can't say anything bad about it because you didn't experience it completely so like whatever your opinion is if you don't read the ending then you're gonna have like not a complete opinion because you didn't finish it so I will always make sure that no matter what I read I try to finish it even if I hate it so I have a section titled almost dropped. So all of these columns are the same layout with the brown kind of like rectangle behind it and then the little cards with each of your books inside. There's also a little filter option and a count of the number of books in each of these columns too. When it comes to the cards, they are pretty easy to create. I use the R key to create a rectangle, drew my border with like the stroke option and then filled it with white and that's pretty much all I did for all of them. The only differences come when the book is in different states or like different columns depending on what like how much I've interacted with the book in a way. Every card has a little heart in the top right corner. And if I like the book, then the heart will be filled out. So all of the books that you see in my completed section have the heart filled out because I've always just enjoyed all of them. I, I chose to list out all my favorite books. There's also the start date or the completed date. And there's sometimes a rating, especially when I've completed or almost dropped a book. And all cards have the title of the book, the author, and the cover. So when it comes to creating the cover, I think that was one of the things that took the longest time for me, but Figma helps make it a little bit faster for you. So a little trick in Figma is that if you select an element or like a layer in your Figma file and then you go and copy another image like from Goodreads, if you hit paste when selecting that layer, Figma will automatically resize it to that size of the layer that you selected so you don't have to like recrop or resize your image and, and that really helped me when I was gathering all of these book covers. But the thing that took the longest amount of time was creating all these little tags underneath each book. So some of them have like two lines worth of tags and then some of them only have one line so it was a little bit finicky for me to try to like space everything appropriately because the cards wouldn't be the same height but it was pretty much all worth it. And it wasn't really that difficult for me because a lot of the books I read are in the same, like have the same tags, have the same genres anyways. So I was duplicating a lot of them. So that was pretty easy for me. And I also used auto layout to create each of these tags cause it was just a lot easier. But yeah, I used auto layout to create all of these tags. So spacing wise, it wasn't too difficult to put together. I think for the card itself, if I was really doing this for a project or something, I could have just changed it into a component and use auto layout, but I didn't really feel like doing it just for practice. I'm absolutely okay just like taking my time and kind of going over a lot of the different books that I loved or that I'm excited to read or books that I honestly can't believe I finished because it was so boring to me. And that would be our main portion of the app. Also, if you guys have any recommendations for books for me to read, I would really appreciate it. I'm trying to read more next year and I don't know, I feel like super out of it. I do watch a lot of like book talk stuff or like, yeah, like book reviews on YouTube too. So. Like I kind of have a good idea about what books are popular and that people are saying are really good. But if you guys have any like personal favorites, I would love to hear it too. All right, so now we're in the final stages of completing this UI and we are going to make that right hand side panel. So what my idea here is that if you select one of the books in your all books shelf or list, then it'll open up and like slide open this little right hand side panel so you can get more details about the book. And in this case, I have one selected already, which is The Song of Achilles, one of my favorite books and the books that kind of destroyed me emotionally when I read it for the first time. So I chose this one to be my right hand side panel. So what I did here actually was take the sidebar that we created on the left hand side 
and then duplicated it with Command or Control D. And then I flipped it horizontally so that I would still like get the same corner radiuses on the outside and on the inside, it would be like straight and clean cut edge. So I did that and then I also duplicated the line that we created and put it on the side, on the left side of the right hand side panel. And then for some reason I also changed up the color to be like a lighter kind of white color. I'm not sure exactly why I did that. I think probably because I didn't want it to get confused with also being a sidebar. So I just like changed up the color I think. But it's so similar you can barely tell the difference. Anyways the hex will be in the video. So for the top, I'm using that triangle again, and you can see that I'm just duplicating a lot of the components we created already. So this should be like, we should just be able to breeze through this final little bit of design. I chose one of the triangles and then I did a little hide text so that if you click it, the side panel will go away. Then I took the book cover and then underneath I added the title, the heart, and also the author. Then underneath the author, I decided to add properties to the book. So just like, I guess metadata for your own, I don't know, your own interest or your own knowledge. Like when you started it, when you completed it, do you own it, the rating you would give by, and if someone recommended the book to you. So for the most part, I usually like to read my books on my iPad, like I'll download it and then I'll just read it from there. But if I really end up liking the book, I will actually buy the hard copy and then I will read it again. So that's why I just have like an owned property in here as well. Underneath here I am again using the line and then I'm just going to create an overview. This is the exact overview that is on Goodreads and I have a little arrow here so that you can collapse and expand all of these different sections. So because this one is like opened then of course the arrow is going to point up so you can collapse it. And then underneath I have things that Goodreads also keeps, so like quotes, reviews, and then other books by the same author. And I have read Circe, but I just didn't like it as much as The Song of Achilles. I know some people really enjoyed it, but I do actually own it and it's in the One Piece room, so it might have just been like how old I was when I picked it up. Oh, I can't remember. I think I read it like maybe six years ago. I don't know. I'm open to trying it again, but I, I have a lot of books in my inventory anyways that I need to get through, so, so the reread might be delayed a bit. So I think that's it for this UI design, and overall I would say this design is very rational and it's quite easy to put together because there's a lot of duplicated components and we have a very small like color palette for this design as a whole. The best part about it is really for me looking at all of the different books I've enjoyed or books that have been on my list and it makes me really excited to continue reading more. All of these are like books that I've heard online are pretty good. Well Crying in H Mart is something that I heard is pretty good so I'm interested in reading about that. I've read all of Percy Jackson books and I loved them when I was younger so I feel like I would just like this. Dark Rise is something I'm really excited about. I almost pre-ordered it but I decided not to and held off for a bit. Um, I really like the author and I think they do a really good job at Slow Burn. This book has been on my radar for at least six years. I was going to read it because after like when you read The Song of Achilles on Goodreads you see like recommended books, this one always pops up and I don't know why but I just never gone into it. Now that I know, I think there's like a sequel out for it right now so I think I might pick that up. This book I see everywhere on Book Talk, and then this one is a book recommended to me from my manager. So I'll give that one a shot too. As for the Magpie Lord, I say it's in progress but really I just mean I bought the book and I downloaded it to my iPad. I don't I didn't really like that's my in progress like that's how little I actually read these days completed I feel like I've talked about the song of Achilles many times already and my first UI design was actually a design for the song of Achilles I have it up on my dribble so I'm just gonna post it into the video but that was like one of my first UI designs I'm pretty sure I did it in Photoshop but that's just how much the book meant to me I would love to like design something for this again I've had the idea in my head for a while so I'm gonna see if I can actually do that Life of Pi was also a really good book I think it was part of the curriculum in grade 11 English or something like that for us and I remember like another thing that I used to do during university to skip classes was go and watch movies by myself on Tuesday because it was half off so I watched The Life of Pi like that and it was fantastic I loved it it was like so visually compelling oh another book that I did that or like another movie 
Another book that turned into a movie that I did that with is Gone Girl. I actually watched that by myself on a Tuesday and that was kind of creepy. But then I read like all of the books um, by that author too. But if I had to recommend a book to you guys on this list, I think you guys should definitely check out Our Happy Time. So this is a book by a Korean author and it got translated. I really wish her other works got translated as well. But yeah, this book was just emotionally draining. I was reading it at night in bed like and I had to go to sleep because I had class the next day but I just couldn't put it down because I was so stressed out for the characters. This book also is a movie and it is also a manga so if you guys want to check any of those out I've seen and read all of them before I really enjoyed it. It will make you cry though. <laughs> And here's my almost drop section. So I feel really bad because the ones that I remember really clearly that I want to drop so bad are like classics, right? Like I, I just did not enjoy Catcher in the Rye and I didn't enjoy Heart of Darkness. Like I thought they were so boring to read, but I was like, oh, it's a classic. You have to read it. And yeah, I, I just don't think like, I don't think it's meant for me. And also the host. It took me like, I wanna say 400 pages until I finally started to get interested in the characters. And by then the book is like almost over anyways. I really wanted to drop it, but I'm glad I finished it. Cause towards the end, I guess I got like, I guess I cared a little bit more. Anyways, I don't know if I'm gonna keep any of that in my video. Yeah, anyways, this is the final design of the UI. I'm also going to post it up onto Dribbble so you guys can see how I decide to lay it out. Also, if you wanna see my like reasoning behind it, you guys can watch my previous video. I showed you guys the process of creating a dribble shot in one of them. I'll link it in the card up here. I'm pretty sure it's up here or up here. And I'll put it in the description if you guys are curious. But yeah, I hope you guys like the design. And if you guys also want to recreate this, I would be so happy if you decide to tag me so that I can view it and just be happy that someone likes my UI designs. And I'm super happy that I finished off the year doing one of these design UI with me videos. If you're interested in seeing my other design UI with me videos, I do have a playlist which I will put in the video here so you guys can check it out if you want to. And yeah, I hope to make many more of these in the future. But for now, I, I just want to say thank you for watching as always and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!